Hey there, and welcome to the first Google Sheets spreadsheet challenge. In this video, I will present you with four questions from easy to hard. Each question will ask you to perform a specific task to test your Google Sheets knowledge and skills. So if you think you're up to the challenge, you can find a link to the practice file down in the description. That being said, let's get started. For our first question, the goal is to add checkboxes to the done column of the task list. By the way, if you want to try and do it yourself before you watch me do it, you can pause the video and then give it a try using the practice file available in the description. Okie dokie, let's get back to question one. This is actually pretty easy to do. Just start by selecting the cells in the done column and then go to insert checkbox. That adds in checkboxes to the done column, and we can move on to question two. For question two, the goal is to change the format of the dates in the due date column to the day number with a leading zero, the month abbreviation, and the full year, just like we see right here. To adjust the date formats, start by selecting all of the cells that contain dates. Next, click on the More Formats button right here in the toolbar, and select the option Custom Date and Time. This opens up the Custom Date and Time Formats dialog box. The first thing that you should do is see if you can find the date format you are looking for among the list of available options. In this case, the format you want is right here. But for the sake of example, let's say that you can't find the date format that you're looking for. That's okay because you can still build the format right here in this box. I will go ahead and delete what's here so we can start from scratch. To begin, click on the down arrow right here and select day. You can then click on where it says day and select how you want the day to be formatted. In this case, you want a leading zero, so select that option. After that, add a dash and then click on the down arrow again and select month. The month should be an abbreviation, so click on the month and select the month as abbreviation option. Finally, add another dash, click on the down arrow and select year. Change the year to the full numeric version and your date format is ready to go. You can go ahead and click on apply and your dates are formatted correctly. Okie dokie. Let's move on to question number three. For question three, the goal is to add a drop-down list to the cells in the category column that pulls from the categories listed here in F4 through F7. To begin, select the cells in the category column and then go to insert and then drop-down. This will open up the data validation panel on the right. Under where it says criteria, change it from drop-down to drop-down from a range. Next, click on the Select Data Range button. And now, select the categories in F4 through F7. Finally, click on OK. At this point, you can go ahead and click on Done if you want to, but let's say that you don't like the look of the chips in the category column. To change the look of these cells, click on Advanced Options. And then, you can select Arrow instead. Finally, select Done. You now have a drop-down of the categories for each cell under the category column. Awesome. Let's go ahead and move on to the final question. For question four, you want to make it so that any task marked as done becomes automatically grayed out just like you see here. So how do you do it? To pull this off, you will have to use conditional formatting, and you want to apply that conditional formatting to the task, category, and due date columns. So, to start, select all the cells in these three columns. From here, go to Format and then Conditional Formatting. This will open up the Conditional Format Rules panel on the right. And now, under where it says Format Cells If, change the selection to Custom Formula Is. In the Value or Formula box, enter in the formula equals dollar sign $D4. Now why do you enter this formula in particular? If you look back at the task list, you can see that the range we selected begins in cell A4. You want to write the conditional formatting formula from the perspective of the first cell 
in your selected range, which in this case is cell A4. So, from the perspective of cell A4, the conditional formatting formula is referencing cell D4. Now, there is also a dollar sign in front of the column letter D, but not in front of the row number. That means that the column part of the reference is locked, and it will not change. But the row number will change for all of the other cells in the selected range. For instance, the conditional formatting for cell B8 will rely on the value in cell D8. The column letter of D stays the same, but the row number updates to match the row of cell B8. And now that I've explained the reference, let me cover why we just need an equal sign here and nothing else. The cells in the done column or column D contain checkboxes. If a checkbox is checked, then that cell evaluates to true. If the checkbox is unchecked, then the cell evaluates to false. Therefore, if cell D4 is checked, that makes the conditional formatting formula equals true, which activates the conditional formatting. However, if the box is unchecked, the formula evaluates to false, which does not trigger the conditional formatting. And now that we have the formula covered, let's move on to the actual formatting. The goal is to gray out any completed tasks. So, to start, we will set the fill color to none. And then we will set the font color to gray. Finally, click on done. And now, anytime a task is marked as done, it becomes grayed out, making the task list fun and interactive. And that officially completes question number four. How did you do? Did you get all of the questions right? Or did you find the last few to be a bit of a challenge? Let me know in the comments below how you did. Also, be sure to subscribe to catch more videos like this. Until next time, keep an eye out and I will see you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.